The Canadian Federation of Independent Business is getting the runaround from Rachel Notley and the NDP with regard to access to information documents. And all I can say is, join the club. The CFIB went looking for documents relating to the cost of the administration of the NDP's new carbon tax. It is a fair question. It costs the taxpayer money to hire new bureaucrats to collect the tax, to write the rebates, to hand out all the free light bulbs and free shower heads to the people you are currently taxing into the poorhouse. New taxes are an expensive proposition for more reasons than just the direct costs of the tax itself. The documents the CFIB received back were heavily redacted. Of course they were. That's how this government operates. In secret, Finance Minister Joe Cece then took to Twitter to defend the government, saying, The carbon tax admin cost is $2.5 million, was released publicly in April. To say this information was not made public is untrue. See that, you guys? We're just supposed to take Joe Cece's word for it all. And if the true cost were actually made public, why are these bureaucrats redacting documents before they get released? Could it be the NDP don't actually know the true cost of the administration of the carbon tax? The thing is, I went looking for some of those same documents way back in January. I made a request for documents outlining analysis of costs of administering the Alberta government's carbon tax. Instead of documents though, I got two bills totaling nearly $1,100. This happens to me all the time. I get information paywalled by the Notley government in hopes that I just quit looking. Remember my investigation into the Fort McMurray water bombers? The government gave me a bill for nearly $4,000 back then to stop me from seeing the damning evidence of the government's mishandling of the water bomber contracts. But thanks to you, this time, I fundraised my way around this latest $1,100 paywall and seven months later, I finally got a response from the government and unlike the CFIB, I at least got some of those documents related to the administration costs of the carbon tax, but mine were also heavily redacted. And rather than the $2.5 million Finance Minister Joe Cece said the carbon tax would cost us, the documents I got show a government, well, without a clue, they spitball a half a dozen or so different costs in a half a dozen or so different ways, I guess just hoping they get it right at some point. Some estimates are less than Joe Cece's predictions, some are more. So let's look at some of what I got back. Page seven of these documents show the predicted cost per year in the NDP budget summary prepared in February of 2016, estimating costs of $3.6 million this year, and then $1.5 million in the coming two years after that. Then we go to page nine for yet another guesstimate. From July 2016, we have $2.56 million this year, $2.85 million next year, and nearly $2 million the year after that. Then we go to page 11. Now we are up to $11 million over five years but they have the cost this year costing us $3 million per year. Then on page 18, we have a document prepared for Environment Minister Shannon Phillips just a month later in September, informing her the cost will be $2.2 million this year. That's actually double what Shannon Phillips once said the carbon tax would cost us. She said it would only cost around $1 million to administer the carbon tax. Then in that same document, it says that the Finance and Treasury Board will need another $200,000 to administer the carbon tax. Does anyone else get the sense, given all the different numbers and guesses in these documents, that the NDP are just low-balling things randomly and hoping for the best? I'll post all these documents so that you can see them for yourself. It's page after page of guess after guess after guess of what the true cost of the administration of the carbon tax will be. Is anyone really surprised when the NDP spend over their budget projections all the time? And did you see all the redactions in these documents? Entire pages are blacked out except for the single line pertaining to my search. What on earth are the NDP hiding from me with all those redactions? And besides evidence of an inept and secretive government that couldn't accurately budget enough cookies for a two-person tea party, the reaction of the media is yet another important part of the story here. Our little network that could has been hit with bills, 
redactions, delays, and flat out denials to send me information that I have legal access to under freedom of information laws in Alberta. The bills have gotten so large and frankly so routine that we even set up a special fundraising site to help me pay for them at whatisshehiding.com. And yet, only now the media breathlessly reports on it when it finally happens to someone else. The media, while they don't really care about press access and transparency for everyone, they only care about their own little inconveniences. And if the rebel gets their access to information blocked, the mainstream media, well, they don't seem to care. I suspect it's because they resent the job we do and we ask the questions they just refuse to. What do you think? For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunreed. The Alberta government is constantly hitting me with big bills for access to information. To help me cover these costs, go to whatisshehiding.com and donate today.